Hello there, and welcome to my little slice of shit. It's an evil resident here, and today we may be looking at a game that is far more sinister than even myself. Detention, a 2D side-scrolling horror game that was published slash developed by Coconut Island and Red Candle, respectively. Don't ask me which one did which, I didn't care enough to actually look into it. Now, if you'd asked me a few years back that a good horror game could come from a 2D side-scroller, I'd be a bit hesitant to believe you. But the 8-bit horror game Home and the Coma Recut, which is very similar to this game, has shown me it can be done. It was the surreal and uncanny art style of detention that drew me in. It's very creepy and unsettling, and characters look like paper cutouts, reminding me of that horrible and equally creepy looking cartoon, Anna and Aconda. You know, the one that ruined the first part of the Digimon movie. But unlike Anna and Aconda, the artwork here is superb. Gameplay-wise, there's no combat, which I normally dislike, but it's such a short game that I don't really mind. That being said, there's only a few ways to deal with enemies in this game, which all essentially boil down to walk past enemy while holding your breath, or get walked by while holding your breath by said enemy. That's pretty much it. There's also place food down for enemy and run like hell away from enemy, but, you know, meh. The rest of the gameplay is pretty much puzzle solving, and looking for clues as to how you got stuck in the situation you're in. And that's where this game really shines, other than its atmosphere, its puzzles. They're not too hard, but just clever enough to make you feel smart for figuring it out. Well, most of the puzzles there is, one stupid one that requires you to memorize the sound of a few piano keys played in a certain way, while you're outside of the room that you have to go in. And you have to go in and re replicate it on this piano. It's bullshit because you're standing outside this room, you load into the room, you try to go over and play the piano keys, you kind of forget what the pattern was like, you leave, you go back in, you do it again. It really sucks. I absolutely fucking hated that puzzle. Yeah, I pretty much just had this thing for looks. Regardless, that's pretty much the gist of the gameplay. Now, what really drives this game is its atmosphere, story, and occasional moments of gore. So, I don't recommend this game to the squeamish or anybody with a tiny bladder, that's for sure, because there are some toe-curdling moments in here that make you m cringe, and you're just like, Ew, uh, uh, No. Now with gameplay out of the way, I'm going to focus a bit more on this game's story. So, that is a spoiler warning. If you'd rather avoid spoilers, I do recommend this game. It's very good. But, from here on out, I'm going to kind of drop the jokes and drop the humor, uh, mainly because of the contents of said story. I think you'll understand in a little bit. In Detention, you play as a young girl named Rei a Taiwanese student that comes from a broken home. Her story is the driving force for why her character and you, as the player, are in the predicament you're in in the first place. Why you're stuck in this creepy haunted school, the main driving force of this game. Throughout the game, you find the puzzles start feeling more and more relatable to your character and her story arc. A story arc you even have a little bit of say in, and you can help affect the ending of the game, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing you'll notice as the story progresses is the setting. The game takes place during a very oppressive time during Taiwan's history, where certain types of books and forms of education are essentially outlawed. That and any type of forward thinking is outlawed. Hell, even fucking gambling is outlawed, and the country is essentially a militaristic state. The schools even have soldiers working alongside 
the teachers. It's an interesting time in 1960s Taiwan, that's for sure. And clearly this oppressive st time and place is the reason for our main character's troubled personal life. And it makes for a great horror setting with the addition of the creatures in this game. Which unfortunately aren't in the game for very long before the game just gets rid of them in favor of fleshing out the story. Which kind of sucks because there's this huge multi-armed creature that would have made a great final boss for this game. Especially since the creature kind of encapsulates the oppressive state that the country was in at the time. And he's just really fucking creepy looking. It's incredible. There's a whole lot more to this game too in terms of the puzzle solving. A lot of the puzzles were amazing and really forward thinking, I feel. It's also really cool how the gameplay often coincides with the story. For example, that giant creature I was telling you about with the multi-arms is actually one of the characters from the real world, but just translated into the horrific sort of Silent Hill-esque world, where he's this crazy destructive force that you really have to get away from, and I think that's really fucking cool. It's also reflected in some of the puzzles. For example, there's a gambling puzzle, and remember, gambling is outlawed, it's forbidden, but the gambling puzzle requires basically six-sided die used inside a bowl. It was a very popular gambling game at the time, and the six-sided die are made out of people's teeth. It's very crazy, it's very visceral. The puzzle even kind of treats gambling as forbidden, just in the fact that you are using somebody's teeth, essentially, that must have been pulled from their mouth one way or another as six-sided die. I thought that's really cool. A lot of cool things in this game, honestly. Now, I know I already recommended the game earlier before I started talking about the story a bit, but here we go again. Um, I recommend you play Detention. It's a good 2D side-scrolling horror game. Uh, there's really not a whole lot more to say about it. It's got some decent puzzles, sometimes frustrating, but when you figure them out, it's pretty rewarding. And it's not too difficult. They, they definitely are in the realm of possibility of figuring out without using any sort of guide. I mean, I did it, and I don't particularly find myself to be the smartest human I've ever known. So, yeah, there you go. I think you'll enjoy it. This is to say if you enjoy horror games, of course. This game's aesthetics are very pleasing. The, the way that it's all kind of drawn is really, really nice. It's like rotoscoped animation, sort of, but in a game. I think it looks good. Sounds great. Plays good. And the story was not half bad. So, yeah, Coconut Island and Red Candle seem to have made a pretty good game here. I do feel like they stole a few elements from the Coma Recut. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's a solid product on its own. It's not like Resident Evil, for example, didn't take inspiration from Alone in the Dark. So I don't feel like that's a huge deal. Anyways, I'm going to rate this game 8 out of 10. It's pretty fucking solid, and all the problems I have with it basically boil down to nitpicks. If I had to choose a major problem with the game, it's just that some of the enemy mechanics could have been fleshed out a bit more. You don't really have to deal with opposing threats very often. About halfway through the game, the game just drops them completely. But yeah, I'd say 8 out of 10 is a solid rating. Anyways, thank you guys for watching my detention review. This has been an evil resident, and I will see you guys on the next video.